the difference between a job-based goal and a competency-based goal? The difference between a competency-based goal and a job-focused goal is that a competency goal reflects what you want to learn or what skill you want to build. Whereas a goal that reflects what you want to do during the year for, as a work plan may not be actually a learning goal that has an impact on competency. For example, mm -hmm. um, you might write a goal for the year that you want to revise your policy manual. Um, you may be an expert in writing policy, so that goal really doesn't reflect what you want to learn. Now, if you weren't really proficient feeling that you knew how to write policies, then your goal might read something like, I want to learn about writing effective policies. Your outcome would be that you're going to apply that learning and revise your policy manual. I see. That makes sense. So from an administrative di dietetics perspective, uh, it's easy to identify who your client is when you're working in the area of clinical nutrition. It might be a specific client group. It might be a specific area of nutrition that you want to dig deeper into. But from an administrative perspective, when you don't really have a client focus or a patient focus, Oftentimes, the most difficult part of completing the CDT is identifying who your client is. My advice is to my advice is to look at what it is that you're doing and identifying specifically an area of focus in your area of practice, so that it might be one year an entire patient population if you're looking at making a service change. However, if you're looking at improving a service to a specific group of patients, it could be that small an area. Or if you're looking at improving a service overall, it might be citizen engagement. So you're looking at patients and their families who've been in hospital and have now been discharged and having them evaluate your service. And the idea is to figure out the best way to do that. So an administrative dietitian can identify a client group as easily as a clinical dietitian can. It just often takes a bit more thought. Jennifer, thank you so much for this today. Just your experience with this and answering our questions in a really informal setting has been really helpful. You're welcome. And the fact that you had these questions means that other people have these questions likely. And I know they do because I often get phone calls and emails about with these exact questions. So just wish I had your brain. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to second that. Um, because now I don't have to be as concerned as um, I might have been, um, you know, with some of these uh, questions that I had and not um, thinking I would get the correct ans answers uh, to them. So that's off to you. Yeah, same, same here. It's really helped to um, sort of clarify, you know, what, what we're expected to do and that it's not as overwhelming as I thought at first coming in, I know now it, it's much more specific and uh, it's not set in stone what we write, We're, we do have some flexibility and uh, that's very helpful and hopefully all that energy I had about worrying about it now I put into yeah. setting some better goals. <laughs> you know, I think mm. everybody feels some anxiety about this workbook and this whole process mm -hmm. and once you go through the auditing process and you see examples and you see how others are doing it and you really take some time to understand why we do it. It's not as overwhelming a, a project and really a lot of it I do driving to work. It's like what do I need to do to practice better? Okay, this is how I'm going to do that and that's how it's going to affect my practice and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it and it's, it does take a lot of time to pra uh, reflect on practice and use the workbook. Uh, that is part of the process but it, it's, it's supposed to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to help focus our, um, you know, where we want to work to be better. 
Yeah, I think like you were saying to me, like don't it's so not don't don't be so scared of it. Take the time. Maybe don't get lost in the terminology mm -hmm. so much. And mm -hmm. like you're saying, just keep it simple, but then try to reflect it back to going through the workbook and mm -hmm. writing the goals. And there's really not a lot of room to write. And that was one of the concerns last year. It was the first year this was actually online, so people could fill it out completely. Mm -hmm. And there's not enough room here for me to fill it out. And it's like, that's not the purpose. Is, it's really it's to be concise. Um, these are the activities mm -hmm. I undertook, and this was my impact, the, the impact on practice. So there are three lines. It really looks to be a really daunting task, and mm -hmm. it's not intended to be. That's great. It's going to be online this year. It will be, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Yeah. So it will be um, online, and um, if you want a hard copy, then I'll mail it for you. But we're trying to go paperless and be conscious of the environment. and. Um, if people aren't using the hard copy, then we really want to avoid having to print it and mail it.